Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're about to listen to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com. JackieCation.com has the links to everything. Merch, the new album, my other podcast, videos of me doing stand-up. Dorkforest.com has all the notes and the video that you can watch of this show. Traditionally, I tell you to donate to the Dork Forest, but it is November and December. I ask that you donate to a local food bank because you should. It's, I don't know, you should do it all year, but what the heck. If you are donating to the Dork Forest using the PayPal link that gives every month, you can turn it off and turn it back on. You can do a matching to your food bank and donate to me as well. But all the money that I get uh, from the donations from November and December, I'll give to my local food bank. And so I will get all of that sweet, sweet karma. Other than that, you can buy merch. You can, for Christmas, there's new, there's new t-shirts and stuff, but whatever it is, the Dork Forest, super fun, always available. I'm sure there's things I'm forgetting to say, probably band camp, but let's get into the show. Hi, Jackie Cation in my garage, returning triumphantly, Murray Valeriano. Oh Welcome my back. God, how long has it been? Too long, long is what I say. At least, at least two years and uh, probably more for sure. Oh man, I would go five, easy. Well, you even you have a new podcast, which is a game show that's only on YouTube. Is that correct? Uh, or is it also um, on Apple Podcasts? It is on Apple Podcasts. I do the audio on Apple Podcasts. It's technically a, a an it's a video game show. So right. So, um, but, but I do but, the I do drop the audio on uh, for, for the Monday morning drivers in, in, on the way to work. Sure. So it's called for what it's worth. It is. And um, what's a good? I forgot to get websites and stuff. What's your uh, what's a oh, what, what's an uh, at? Murray Valeriana, I'm sorry, youtube.com forward slash C (laughs) forward slash Murray Valeriano comedy. They wouldn't give me just a Murray Valeriano YouTube. By the way, YouTube blows. I don't know if anybody uh, uh, in their 50s has started a YouTube channel like myself. (laughs) Not Um, you didn't. You know, remember Vimeo tried to uh, to take over and they just sort of are a place to park videos now. Vimeo. I wonder if I, I might look into because I'm looking into something else because I'm tired of it, YouTube is it's too much work for the audience. Yeah, yeah, and and if you, know you don't I mean? have ads, I guess the algorithm doesn't push the uh, the video. And yeah, it's so, very it's very odd. And I just started. I this is last week's episode was the first uh, episode that I decided to turn the ads on on the on the YouTube video for Dork Forest. Oh, um, just 16 years later. And, um, <laughs> but I, I was like, I'm going to do it just to push it. And then people will, you know, skip ad, do whatever you need to do. Um, and hopefully it won't be ads for guns and some horrible political thing. Right. Anyway, have you been, have you seen a bump in numbers or anything? No, no, As just I adjust word. my hair, realizing we're on YouTube. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, it, vanity still in my we're, fifties. <laughs> we're, uh, I did it yesterday. So I have not okay. yet seen a bump in the numbers. Uh, so I don't know if the numbers will bump uh, from the hundreds because the the, the downloads are in you know thousands, but the right. number the YouTube numbers. What is that? I'm gonna that j- jot that down to remind to turn on ads if I haven't. Oh, on turn my, on ads for what it's for worth. Uh, every game show host needs a card. Oh, fair enough. You got a card, uh, Murray. You've yes, been ma'am. on before. You are you are quoted often in. Every dork forest, every couple of dork forests, uh, especially a musical dork forest. Oh, really? Because one of your first dork forests, if not the first, was that U2 one. Mm-hmm. And you gave me a USB stick that had great reuse uh, uh, options because you put Excellent. over 100 U2 songs. And what you did was you created uh, the rule. When anyone comes on and talks about music, I'm like, eight songs. Eight songs. I will listen to all of them, but you can only give me eight, and because uh, your YouTube knowledge goes deep and forever, there is no b- bottom. Uh, but uh, I felt like I met a Balrog. Yeah. All right. Well, first of all, X uh, U two dropped a new song today. As a matter of fact, for <laughs> for I was listening to it while I was waiting for you to come on. It's for Sing Two, the movie. Very sure. excited about it. Bono plays a part, and I am also one of those guys who still makes mixtapes, as you know. 
Yep. And and I'll be talking to some random person at a party, and I'll be like, "Oh, have you heard the new ACDC album?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, "Oh, I'll make you. I'll make you a playlist." They're like, you don't have to. Well, I'm gonna anyway. <laughs> So just accept it. Right. Just know in your heart that it's coming yeah. at you. It's what I and, do. I'm going to do it for myself. So I might as well give you a copy. <laughs> right. Right. Because now that I've thought of it, it's happening. Yeah. And it's that, happening. And, and quite honestly, that's your dork topic tonight, which is uh, today, which is music trivia. Yeah. And yeah. what, you know, my brother Russ wants to come back on the show and talk to me about unlikely ways that musicians have made money. Uh, but oh, that's you, interesting. That does sound interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, really. The, yeah, the only one I can think of is that guy from the Monkees who helped invent MTV, but um, <laughs> Michael Nesmith. And uh, so, but what? Uh, what? Uh, what? Because for what it's worth, is yes. a musical trivia game show well, that you tried I... to get me on, and nothing <laughs> right. was funnier to me than me trying to think about answering questions about music, but well, it was here's, fun. here's the, here's the problem. I don't know how to c call it anything else because music trivia is really one third of it. Um, this whole thing was really inspired by at midnight. Remember okay. that? Great. Yeah, yeah. I love doing that. I love doing that show because you, you wrote your own jokes and they're like yeah. one-off jokes. You'll never use them again. Right? So there's a section in the game that is kind of at midnight esque where the comics write their own material. So that's not trivia. And nope. then there's a speed round game, which I try to make fun, which is kind of trivia ish, but kind of not. So okay. trivia is just a small and going to your point. Um, you don't have to be a trivia nerd because I write them specifically. Well, especially for people like, Oh, I love the show. It's hilarious. I don't know much about music. I write them specifically for those type of people. Right. I mean, when we did it and it, there was technical difficulty, so I'll have to come back on, but one yeah, of the, absolutely, please. one of the, um, one of the questions you asked was a Lord of the Rings question, which, yeah. uh, saved my, I was able to answer that question. Right. And, and so, uh, and how I write them is like, um, I remember that question and the, the topic was Imagine Dragons. Oh, right. Okay. Which is a band. Right. So, right. oh, Imagine Dragons. I don't know much about Imagine Dragons. I'll bet one point. And then it's mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin was writing music yes. about Lord of the Rings I in the been... 70s. Who was uh -huh. that? You know what I mean? So, and weirdly enough, I had just done, I had just gone down some weird dork forest rabbit hole uh, regarding uh, Led Zeppelin. So oh, I, I had access to that. So what... When you say that you enjoy music trivia, because it's mm -hmm. clearly you're researching for the for yeah. the show, is it? And it's a labor of love because everything Absolutely. has to be, right. and uh, <laughs> can't be a labor of money. Uh, no, not initially, no. not initially. No, and no. Um, so, but what? What's your favorite? Like, how do you how do you start looking at, mm -hmm. at for trivia? And what's your favorite way to to find stuff? Like, what is well, it? Like, do you pick the band or do you pick the topic? Um, well, I, I, I for, uh, first of all, I, 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 I took a lot of what I knew, knew already for the first round. I'm, I'm about a 18 episodes, maybe 15 episodes. You took a lot of what you already knew for 15 episodes of a game yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the, well, so you two, clearly, you know, a lot about you two. Sure. Absolutely. What other bands? What other music? What other music do you have trivial knowledge of? Just offhand, well, I, a couple of I, I, everything. But, but but one thing I don't, I didn't want it to do was to be who played bass on you know U 2s forty, which was the edge. They switched. And you do and not want to listen to Jimmy Pardo's episode about Chicago, where oh, no. the first thing that he did was he named everyone who had ever been in Chicago. Oh Jesus by, Christ! By, was by that an memory. hour? By memory, yes, it <laughs> oh, was. Oh my God! Yes, it was. Well, he's insane. With no, no, actually, I love that stuff, but I don't. I didn't want that because I want, want that to I, be the show. Yeah, I want because it's I have you you brilliant comics on being mm -hmm. hilarious. Like I I want them to stay for the comedy. I want it to be fun. So I try not to make it boring stuff that I bore my wife with. But please when a song bore comes me on. with it. Bore me with but it I'm, right but now. What I'm what's saying your, what's is, your most boring thing that that you? Oh, go ahead. But what I'm saying is I'm not making them boring. So it's like so no, you know no, like your YouTube, show isn't boring. Everyone right. should totally watch your show. Right. But this is your hour to and your wife isn't here. 
So okay. you can, right. you can so literally... like, I like stuff like um, the saxophone on Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side was played by David Bowie's saxophone teacher. Teacher. Like, yeah. So uh, I, so I like Reed. stuff like that. Lou Reed. Okay. Lou Reed. The Velvet Underground. Velvet Underground. I was going to say he was in a band. He's not just a <laughs> solo artist. Right. And uh, Velvet Underground, big deal in the 60s and 70s. 60s. Yeah. yeah. Maybe okay. in the 71 or Maybe. so. Yeah. All right. Early, early 70s. And then uh, so his saxophone player was the teacher of the saxophone player, David Bowie's saxophone player. Yes. And now that you mentioned that, I'm going to have to Google it and double check. Why that. do you know that? <laughs> it must have just been. Well, do you get. Is it. Rolling Stone, or is it? Is there a musician's quarterly? What are you? <laughs> what are you reading? <laughs> well, when when I first started, all right. So I wasn't allowed to. Uh, all right. So it, his, name was, his name was his name was sorry. His name was Ronnie Ross. Okay. Uh, the sax. I'm just double checking. I had sure. two rock critics on my show, and they questioned my trivia. Yeah. And I, thank God I was right both, but now I'm second guessing <laughs> everything I do. So I think I'm pretty right on that. I'm not going to bore. Uh, call, I'm not going to spend the this, downtime. You can't. Uh, you can't bore. Uh, you can't bore the door, Rangers of the Dork Forest. Oh yeah, the minutia. I, I don't mean that. Yeah, the minutia is what what we live for. Uh, Absolutely. Because I don't know anything. Sure. I, 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 what's a? Is Lou Reed? Oh, I don't even want to guess. And who wants me to guess? You want me to guess? Yes. Go for it. Walk on the wild side. Yes. Is that yes. 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 Look at you. I can't name a second, but there you go. That's uh, fine. Mm-hmm, That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The thing about uh, Lou Reed, who passed away a couple of years ago, was a uh, professional singer for 50 years. Never got better at singing. Never got better at singing. Interesting. Just terrible Interesting. monotone. But it's it kind of worked for the Velvet Underground and a lot of his solo stuff. Now, did you mostly listen to rock and... Um like heavy metal and stuff like that when you were a kid or did you listen to pop uh i never like i like heavy metal now i didn't like heavy metal when i was a kid but um i was my uh, for those of who listen who know me um my upbringing was my dad was a southern baptist preacher so i wasn't allowed to listen to music or until, like anything really yeah pretty no dancing no no yeah. no movies stuff like that right um, so when I would get booted out of school, out of class for being a smart ass, I just go down to the library and read the encyclopedia rock. I read a book on Woodstock. I, I did a term paper on Woodstock in high school and everybody was like the bird from Snoopy. I'm like, no, no, it was a concert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, the only thing I know is that where they chanted the F word, uh, because oh, yeah. I was part of an album. I was part of an album club in junior high. And you could bring any album in and they would play it. And I brought in the Woodstock album that belonged to my stepmother. And uh, the teacher, who was this woman who was like an old hippie woman, she taught social studies and she dressed like a dragonfly. She had a lot of gauze. (laughs) And uh, and she was amazing. Uh, amazing. And um, Mrs. Mertz? What the hell was her name? Anyway, but uh, she, uh, she said, you can't play that one song. And then that, of course, was the song I wanted to play. But of uh, the right in rest front of, of Country it, Joe and the Fish. Right in front of Country Joe and the Fish. Yeah. She was like, "All right, I'm taking it off." And uh, <laughs> but so, what was your what, what do we know about Woodstock? We know that Joni Mitchell. This is what I know. Uh, that Joni Mitchell didn't make it. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, the Beatles were asked. The Beatles were asked. The to Beatles be, were oh, asked. But they were too big, probably. They were at they it's 69. So they might have officially been broken up and not unofficially been broken up. So I believe the quote is John said, um, I don't think I could get the lads together. Oh, all right. And then he then he pitched the plastic Ono band with Yoko and they're like hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Yoko, except for that. I've heard some Yoko and I'm OK. I'm OK with a well, hard know, pass. She gets she gets blamed for breaking up the Beatles. And it 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 really Every, everything broke up the Beatles. Egos, money, time, everything broke up the Beatles. It wasn't right. Yoko. No, Although no. I'm sure it was it a pain be. in the ass with her sitting next to John recording the whole time. But And everybody's everybody had some some person sitting next to them, didn't they? Like, there's no yeah, way. at one and, point. And, yeah, and he was, and she was his muse. And I mm-hmm. remember I saw Dick Cavett. Oh, I've seen a lot of Dick Cavett. I love and, Dick Cavett. Uh, right, so Dick Cavett interviews... Um, John, John and Lennon. Yeah. No, just John Lennon. Wait, oh. might have been John and Yoko, but whatever it was. I think they did a week long with 
with right, Dick. and it was no studio audience. It was just the the three of them, I think. Mm-hmm. And whatever it was, at some point, uh, John Lennon says, "You know, everybody blames uh, Yoko for breaking up the mm-hmm. band, but look at the stuff that Paul McCartney has done since the band broke up. You wouldn't have that, right? So you should be thanking Yoko for breaking up the band." <laughs> and it was such a great answer, right? Yeah, yeah. And because like, Paul like McCartney their, stuff I, is really good. Paul McCartney stuff's good. You know, a lot of John's is good too. Uh, I, I tend to be in the McCartney camp, but um, I, I love their relationship. And just there, there was a quote from either John or Paul that's when they asked, "Are you and Paul? Are you guys still friends? Or are you guys fighting?" And he's like, "Yeah, if you can't fight with your best friend, who can you fight with?" You know? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So did they did they talk until John died? Do you know or yeah, they, they off made, and on? They, they made up. They made up. I think I think everybody made up uh, in that. That's band. cool because I'm reminded of. I picture them. Did you ever hear that story of Todd Glass? I don't know if it's true or not, but it's an awesome story. Todd Glass is uh, he walks into the comedy cellar and Louis C.K. is there, and he mm-hmm. yell. Todd Glass yells across the room, "We don't talk anymore." We don't talk anymore. <laughs> and it's such a Todd Glass moment. Oh, absolutely. That I wish, I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Oh, I like it. I love Todd yeah. Glass. Sure. Me too. Louis C.K., <laughs> not as much. Not as well. Wa- you know what? Yeah, I'm not a fan. I wanted him to have done the joke about the thing that he did that was not nice, that wasn't cool. And uh, instead, I guess he's doing a joke about how I guess she changed. I guess it's okay for people to change their mind. They say yes to something and then they change their mind. And I was like, yeah, that's true when I lend somebody my iPhone. It's true on every level. I've given you something. I would like it back. I've taken it. I, I don't want you to have it anymore. And when your dick's in your hand, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm not, to quote Kevin Nealon, interested, interested, right. not interested, not interested. Right. And, right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've weeded off. Yeah, that's uh, fine. But what, um, so the Beatles mm-hmm. are huge. Oh, did we you... just did a Beatles episode, by the way. Oh, really? With an a lot of Be- Beatles? I surprised it. I surprised everybody on it and made it an all Beatles episode. What, what's your favorite trivia about the Beatles that somebody might not know? Um, I mean, not me, other people. On a, on a <laughs> drunken weekend in Los Angeles, John Lennon went to the Troubadour with Harry Nilsson. And got Harry Nelson. hammered. Harry Nelson was a singer. Thank you. Uh, and he, and um, John ended up producing one of his albums. Um, they got so drunk, they heckled the Smothers Brothers and got kicked out of the Troubadour. <laughs> and I, I believe there was some sort of, I believe a, a, a waitress might have been punched at one point. I don't know that for sure. There might have been hitting? There uh... was hitting. Oh, and then on top of that, I had Greg Proops on an episode where I laid out that question. Yep. And he said, oh, you know, about 10 years ago, I was working with him, that great voice he has that I can't yeah. do. Um, he's like, 10 years ago or so, I was working with Tommy Smothers. Yep. And he told me the story of that night. Oh. And and Tommy went out to the, and it, the fight went out to the valet and John got punched. <gasps> what year Knocked is his, this? 70 mid 70s early like, 70s like not, probably not the 60s just a later no, no. Oh, yeah okay. this is later this is or this is mid 70s and okay. um and so john gets punched out glasses fall to the ground <gasps> tommy's wife picks him up Ooh. she still has him <laughs> <laughs> i once stole donnie bonaducci's uh danny bonaducci's <laughs> jacket is that <laughs> comparable at all I, I'm right up there, right, right up, up there. there, right up there. And then, <laughs> and then I told the manager of the club and she was like, Jesus Christ, Jackie, get, give it to me. Now, <laughs> now I have to, now I have to go meet him at the airport and, cause he was looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Why That's do you, a- just because he was there or are you a, are you yeah. a Partridge family fan? Uh, I am a Partridge family. I am a Partridge family okay. fan, but I will say, and I like Danny Bonaducci a great deal. Uh, but the, um, I think a friend of mine dared me to do it. And oh, yeah. uh, I was very drunk and very stupid. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's no there's no reason to steal anybody's stuff. Uh, yeah. Even though John Lennon's glasses, in retrospect, that's amazing. I don't want to paint Mrs. Smothers 
with the, the, <laughs> the theft brush because <laughs> I don't. But I mean, uh, th- uh, th- there's a fine line between stealing and opportunities, right? And it was you know I mean? it was John Lennon in 1975 or whatever, right? right I right. mean, it's almost impossible, and you know that he had extra glasses, oh. so. <laughs> And, he, yeah. and the guy the wasn't living. had great, great optometry coverage. Great. <laughs> and they weren't living check to check. So yeah, no, uh, no. I think that he could buy new glasses and uh, yeah, probably absolutely. wanted new frames. Anyway, um, <laughs> were they were they the classic roundy ones? Do you know? I, I would imagine they were I classic assume. round. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think I've seen him in any other glasses off the top right, of right. my head. I'm sure there's a few uh, photos out there. Oh, that's that, awesome. That was just such a, that was just such a great because I did proofs didn't even get that question. Somebody else got that question because I knew the guy was a Harry Nilsson fan. And yep. then proofs just chimed in going to the fact that stand up or comedy, you can use everything, you know, I feel like I should know who Harry Nilsson is. Harry Nilsson. You... Um, he, he, his biggest uh, hit was uh, without you, I believe from uh, urban cowboy. Okay. Who sang on and on one hit wonder. On and on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, hold on. I'm looking at making sure trying. I got da, yeah, da, da, Harry Nelson da, da. without you. Oh, okay. And who sang um, on and on? On and on is uh, can, is it? Oh, it might be the guy who did uh, who was in um, the Animal House. Hold on. Okay. And, and on because I have to say that I heard I saw that song. Uh, very must have been Bishop. a Stephen Bishop with a PH, if I remember correctly. And I believe he was a the one- guitar player in Animal House. Wait, the movie? Who, yeah. Hold on. All right. Animal Whatever House. happened to oh, that guy? Let me you double know. check. Okay. I'll double, ch- and- I'll double check. Yeah. Stephen Bishop is the guitar player who sings, If I Gave My Love a Cherry, and then Belushi destroys his guitar. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's my Stephen God. Bishop. That's okay. Well, so that guy's fine. That guy's um, doing all right. He had a, he had more hits. He was more than a one hit wonder. Okay. Oh, good. 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 Good to hear it. Good to hear it. And steady work in Hollywood, obviously, because uh, uh, he was well, on the up, Merv up until seventy eight. Oh, Merv uh, Griffin. Yeah, I saw him on the Merv Griffin show in probably seventy four or seventy five. Would okay. it have been? Yeah, that's on seventy five. Sounds about right. Anyway, I like uh, his song. It might be you. It might be you. Uh, I don't know that one. You got a I'll few bars. All right, I'll send it to you. Oh, I've you'll send it to me. People enough with my attempt to sing. <laughs> That's why I do trivia, not in front of uh, band. Right. So, who I, is there? Anybody like currently that you think that there's going to be trivia questions about these people twelve years from now? Like that? With oh. like, is anyone going to say Lil Nas? What's going on? What What do we? What's his dog's name? You know? Do yeah. We, I don't. You know, it's funny because um, I'm. 50 so my yeah. my show skews old and white uh, yeah. although i do love hip-hop and i love country you know i love i love it all right you um, just love music right so, i do and, and you'll yeah. listen to anything what was what was your introduction to hip-hop uh probably run dmc uh okay. when i was when i was a ju- in junior high i got sent off to a private christian school Okay. And for, just in case, uh, just in case the local indoctrination wasn't working. <laughs> right, right. Let's make sure he gets this twenty four seven. But it was for troubled Christian youth, oh, I think. And and the um, trouble was is that it was hard to be bossed so hard by the meanest Jesus. Let yeah, me guess. The, Let the, me just guess. The trouble. The trouble was just Noah's Ark. Couldn't buy it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh come on! It was a great parable. It was a wonderful parable. Anyway, it was a great parable. Don't take it as fact. Um, okay. Well, fair enough. So I went, I went to a, 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 a school, which was in a church when I was one of a handful of white kids mm-hmm. in this. And so I was introduced to early hip hop, like African Bambata, Run DMC, uh, Cool Herc, all those guys. And okay. they were, and this was, and they were, I remember my buddy Azeem yep. doing the moonwalk before Michael Jackson did it on, I think the Grammys or whatever that blew the world wide open. Right, right, because it was so already would, sort of in the zeitgeist. It was, it it was, was already the there. Black, kind of like, yeah, kind of like Madonna's Vogue. Yeah. When Madonna did Vogue, Vogue in the New York scene was already passed. You know? Right, right. So, my, so it was already in the it was already in the hip hop uh, lexicon and, and yeah, yeah. And, and, and all that stuff. And so and, I would go and I'd listen. I'd hear all this music because they would sneak it in and would listen to little transistors. Then I'd go home and get made fun of by my white friends. 
<laughs> oh, fair enough. Uh, at least you had friends. Good for you. Uh-huh. And uh, Thanks. so Thanks. <laughs> it's uh, and what kind of country music did you like? I like I like all like my thing for country music is if you haven't been to prison, you haven't been drunk, uh, you haven't been hit by a train, you, you haven't had a, a gunfight with your mom. Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear outlaw. I want to hear. Yeah, exactly. What's Waylon, outlaw? Will uh, just outlaw country. Oh, outlaw. Oh, so sort of. I mean, the thing is, is in the seventies, I my stepmother also she went from Woodstock to mm-hmm. like Waylon Jennings and sure. Willie Nelson and all of those guys and would listen to it nonstop. She had the albums and and so I listened to them too. And um, but it it felt a little rocky. You know, it was starting to get well, it was starting to get more pop rock. I would there was a uh, there, there's a cross in the late 60s, uh, mostly by like the birds and Graham Parsons for that country rock. OK, thing. I think Graham, pa- Graham Parsons might be heralded as really the first one to, to do it. Uh, some I could be wrong on that. Right. Um, so there was definitely a thin line. And if you go and look at a lot of the bands that played. Woodstock, you know, they had, yeah. that, they had that country, that Americana type thing. Dylan, the band had already broken off from Dylan and okay. they were doing Americana stuff. So that kind of Americana country thing kind of really met in the late 60s, early 70s between country and rock. There's a I wish I could find this quote. I've been looking for it forever. There's a there was a great club in Texas in the late 60s and it was a hippie club and they yep. were going to have Willie Nelson. And they made the announcement of Willie Nelson coming and everybody booed. And he said, come on, he's the country version of, of Bob Dylan. And then everybody booed more. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's too bad because Willie Nelson is great, you know? Oh, it's, fantastic. Uh, I love him. I, love I think him. of him as the Weird Al Yankovic of mainstream country music. Um, I want to know why. Well, because the other way would be a Weird Al Yankovic is sort of the Willie Nelson of Ferking. You know, of of sort of um, parody uh, music. Okay, because I, I don't think know if I see the connection. Well, I don't know because I think that there's a lot of cred in Willie Nelson. Oh, absolutely. And so I think that uh, Weird Al Yankovic has more cred as a guitar comic than any other guitar comic in the history of the world. That's that's where I that's how I got I there. Agree I'm not that. saying I'm right. I'm just Dude, saying. I Weird Al is phenomenal. Like he, really uh, is. he gets, he gets shit on of so much for being a guitar comic, quote unquote, or, a, or, or a did novelty back rock. in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. But he is, dude, if you ever listen to his uh, song, Bob. Yeah. It's nope. all palindromes. Oh, is it? It's all, <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. The guy's brilliant. The guy's brilliant. Yeah. I love Weird Al. Right. I mean, the, and, and the thing is, is he sort of outlived how, you know, the other comics, because the thing is, is if you're good at anything. You're just good at it, and eventually there will yeah. be an audience for it. So um, that and and he sort of he outlived his enemies, right? He kind oh, 100%. of hundred percent. Yeah, so it's kind of great. I agree. We yeah. a bunch of us, a bunch of comics were in a Weird Al video called um, "The Saga Begins." What's that? It, it, it was his parody of um, American Pie, mm-hmm. uh, done about Anakin Skywalker. Hello, Dark Forest. Uh, <laughs> nice. That is a rabbit hole right there. Right? A... Say that again? It's, it's, all right. The, the parody song is, uh, it's called The Saga Begins. Okay. But it's the parody of uh, Don McLean's American Pie. Yeah. But it's and, about but the Anakin. The story is about Anakin Skywalker. In the prequel? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It came around with prequels. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that he talks about a... him being a little kid. My, my, this here Anakin guy. Uh, that's he's a awesome. pilot, but but someday he'll be Darth Vader, but now he's a small fry. I mean, come on, <laughs> classic Weird Al lyrics. It, oh, it's, perfect. Yeah. It's so great. It but is it was great. like me, uh, a, a comedy manager booked it at this t- at that time. So it was like me, Darren Carter was in it. Sure, sure. Red Dar- Hair. The Party Starter. Yeah, yep, Darling party starter. Hunt. Sure. Um, A guy named... Mike Wilson, who I kind of know, kind of don't know from back in the day. And his name is Mike Comedy Wilson. Magic? Um, I think so. Yeah, it's, um, it's a real hard name for me to have that stick to a face, I'm afraid. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> I know. But I'm, and, I'm blanking on all the, but uh, yeah, it was all comics and stuff. And oh, so we're all awesome. extras in it. And so you can, you can look it up. And all, everybody cool. in, in, in Star Trek makeup is, are actually comedians. Star Wars, hopefully. But Star Trek I know, would be even. They use Star Trek. They use Star Trek. Oh. I had a Star Trek head. 
That is but, outstanding. But there were other Star Wars. I, I, I don't think they could do the character. I don't. I, maybe for copyright. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I'm speaking out of terms here, but um, yeah. So I don't think they could use actual. So they kind of looked like they would fit in the bar scene and in and in, in, in Lee, but yeah. Yeah, but not. But it was definitely a, a Star Trek makeup person on it. Right, right. Oh my God, there's so much. I mean, it is interesting about the the about music because there's so many different kinds of music. Did you? Mm. And I think I just brought this up an episode ago or so. But here we go again. Or I didn't. Uh, Bridgerton, the TV show, okay, on Netflix, romance novel series, limited series. Okay. Sure. Uh, the or there. Uh, orchestral arrangements of of um, pop tunes, like "Thank You Next," Ariana really? Grande. Yeah, was a yeah. was a. That's what they danced to. That was the that was the oh, Regency dance to "Thank You Next," um, but with an uh, with an orchestral arrangement. Oh, that's I my I'm pointing across the street. My neighbor wrote uh, on that. I will oh. talk to her about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been meaning uh, to watch it. I'm a terrible friend. I never watch. Oh, I never watch anything. I haven't seen yeah. all of Lady Dynamite. So, uh... <laughs> you, I thought I was a terrible friend. Yes. <laughs> How is this uh, with Maria? I have not seen her in forever. Tell her Marie, ba- Marie Bamford's doing the Lord's work. She's doing great. She's and, so great. Uh, I love her. Yeah, she's outstanding. And so what... Um, yeah, so what's your... What You know, there's music used in TV and movies. Uh-huh. What's your favorites of those? Of music used in movies? Um, wow. Uh, well, I, I, my, my movies uh, have really been mostly ch- kids' movies since I have a nine-year-old. Yeah. So we were, we were talking about – I was talking about uh, U2 dropping a, a song for Sing coming up. The, the, uh, the original Sing for Sing 2, the original Sing has great use of music in it. Um, uh, oh, existing, existing, yeah, existing music? Yeah, already existing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Cool. They cover Stevie Wonder in there, some old uh, Traffic, some old Spencer Davis group. Uh, Beyonce, it opens with Beyonce and Jay Z. Uh, okay, it's it's great, it's great. And I always like that's what I like. I like when when I'm watching a kids movie, and like Secret Life of Pets two, yep. right, which is really good. Um, uh, opens with uh, Empire State of Mind by Jay Z. Okay. Oh, oh like, that's... Right, well, they, they got out before the N-word came out, but... <laughs> Empire State of Mind was a Billy Joel album? No, uh, New York a, State of Mind New York was, State of was, Mind uh, was, was a Billy, Billy Joel, Joel song, album song. And covered exquisitely by the Velvet Fog himself. Um, oh, crap. I'm blanking on his name right now. Mel Torme. Mel Torme covered New York State of Mind. That actually works. It uh, did. works great. Yeah. Yeah. That, I would actually like to hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, attainable Goal. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, uh, that's, so, that's what we're here for, attainable goals. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I do, like, because I just, my brother has always enjoyed Perry Como. And, okay. Because uh, Perry Como. I have Como, to say I'm not up on Perry, but. Perry Como uh, has a voice like a stick of butter. You know, it's sort of Bing Crosby, but 1967 mm. or whatever, 1972. Mm. And he has, uh, I have a Christmas song that's been in my rotation Oh, for the last two years, I'm, I haven't taken it out. Haven't ever taken it out because uh, when Christmas ended in uh, in 2015, I was like, "Nope, still Christmas." Oh, uh, I love it. Can't not do it because I can't. Uh, otherwise, I'll just cry myself to sleep. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it going. And um, how did you do that? Because I cried myself to sleep probably up until last night, and probably do it again tonight. Uh, tonight, <laughs> so you got some free time. I recommend a little pillow work. Just, just really, just get in there, and uh, just cr- scream like Wolverine into the sky. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what? You know what Christmas album I love is um, um, Dean Martin's Christmas album. Oh wow! I'm, I'm not. I'm not a a, a vine, I'm not an audiophile. Like I'm not a vinyl guy. Okay. Um, but that is one of the albums. I'll, he might have two, but uh, that is one of the albums that I I insist on playing on vinyl. It's just so great. Um, is it the excellent. crackle? Is it the crackle? Yeah, I think that... the crackle adds adds to it. Um, and they're you know they're all standard Christmas standards. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, he, yeah the he sings Martin Christmas White album, Christmas yeah. and the and the sleigh and yeah. Oh, we got White Christmas. We got Jingle Bells. We got Let It Snow. Marshmallow World. I love. Uh, yeah. Silent Night, of course. I think God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen by Annie Lennox might be my favorite Christmas song. 
I don't know that's off you, a very special Christmas, right? Uh, very possible. I just it it Christmas. So I actually could do a Dork Forest about Christmas Absolutely. songs because I do love Christmas songs. There's three or four very special Christmases, um, and Annie Lennox. Uh, she yeah, that's one of my favorites. Also, um, I'm looking up the. I'm, I don't know why I'm Wikipedia. I could just pull it up on my phone. Oh, no worries. <laughs> and but it's uh, yeah, yeah. That, that first that verse, a very special Christmas, mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, oh, is that a, a whole album? They did a jazz one. They did a jazz one. Oh, is it mixed? Um, is it is it different artists doing different? Yeah, tracks? it's different artists. A very special Christmas. Let me do volume one. Um, yeah, it's different. It has my favorite U two Christmas song, "Baby, Please Come Home." Christmas, baby, please come home. Which uh, Letterman had. The original singer on it every year before he retired. Oh, um, really? Who is oh, it? Oh, and I'm blanking. I'm blanking on her name. Let me just go to my okay. iTunes because Wikipedia isn't giving me shit. Um, well, take this opportunity, very... ladies and gentlemen, to know that my new album is on iTunes. Oh, there you and go. And it's called Staycation. So get with it and feel free to stream it, download it, uh, do something with it. And then, I'm so excited uh, for that, man. I'm so excited yeah. for you. You're one of my favorite comedians. Uh, um, it you is work harder fun. than anybody I know. Well, I appreciate that. I know people that work almost as hard or harder. And um, and no, it's super, not as funny super as you. fun. Well, success. I also like to, I also like to say this. What? Always, always, whenever I get a chance, you are my wife's <laughs> favorite comedian. I'd like I to point out to your listeners that I am also a comedian. You also you do the stand up. You are my wife's favorite comedian. I know. It, it is so funny. Uh, same problem. <laughs> my stepmother's favorite comedian, Norm MacDonald. <laughs> and I was like, you know that I do stand Never mind. I'm, just, I'm happy for you. And, so, yeah. Uh, Winter so Wonderland, or Eurythmics. Yeah. On a Very Special Christmas, which is great. Right. Uh, all over. Uh, Christmas All Over Again. Tom Petty. Uh... Merry Christmas, baby. Obviously, Bruce Springsteen, that's a big one from him. I don't know anything uh, about Go ahead. Go ahead and pass over Sting's Gabriel message. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a big yeah, snore. Yeah, he's got he's to always do that shit. Can't stand uh, it. Well, uh, I don't know anything about Tom Petty. I know that he died just okay. a couple of years ago. He did. Was, um, any he, fun facts about Tom Petty? He, uh, he, got, he was in a band called Mud Crutch. Mud Crutch. Um, Back in Florida, okay. and they got a deal. I'm, I'm not up on my Tom Petty, but this is what I know. Okay. Uh, Darlene Love originally did Christmas Baby, Please Come Home, and okay. Letterman had her on every Christmas, and it was fantastic. Awesome. Um, so Petty got a deal, or some sort of deal here in Los Angeles, moved the whole band to Los Angeles. The record company or the producers were like, yeah, we like you, <gasps> not the band. Uh oh, so wait, they, Tom Petty so they, and the Heartbreakers? Yeah, yeah. So they were still Mud Crutch at the time, if I believe okay. correctly. Fair enough. And um, they're like, "We want you. We don't want the rest of the band." So <sighs> he signed the deal and then hired the heart hired Mud Crutch as the Heartbreakers. Oh. And so he kind of got the band in together anyway. Oh, that or most 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 of Mud Crutch. Right, right, and I mean the thing is, is that's such a. Uh, kind of a businessy thing. You know, there's so many different jobs when you get into, when you get into show business and you mm -hmm. didn't realize, cause when was, when did that happen? Was that also the seventies or the sixties? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That after the late seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Late 70s, and yeah. So he literally, he was like, I'm going to do an end around mm -hmm. and I am going to figure out how to get my friends into this deal. And, mm -hmm. um, he was like, I got to be the lead singer. I'm psyched to be the lead singer. I'm so sorry you're not the lead singer. Would you still like to work with me? I assume right. that is something like what the... And then some of them said, I'm a star. I'm out of here. And then other yeah, ones were like... I think a couple like, of them did that. Yes. I would love to continue to work uh, doing music. Yeah, I so, think his guitar player... Um, uh, bailed? No, stayed with him. Oh. He's been with him ever since. And uh, he, he's such a great guitar player, and I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, Was it Jimi Hendrix? No, it wasn't. He was not <laughs> you know, that's another fun thing about uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers is they fired Stan Lynch, the drummer. Okay. Or Stan Lynch left. This is way, way, way. This is in the 90s. Okay. This is late 80s, early 90s, early 90s. So Stan Lynch leaves. And I'm watching Saturday Night Live one night. And this is my youth. So I was probably high. 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm watching Tom Petty and I look close and I'm like, that's fucking Dave Grohl on drums. <laughs> so they brought Dave Grohl in from the Foo Fighters and Nirvana wow. to just, just after Kurt died. I don't think the Foo Fighters were really established yet. Mm-hmm. And they had him fill in on drums. So you're watching Tom Petty do his, you know, sometime country rock, like we were talking about earlier, and yep. just Grohl in the background, like, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> wailing on the drums. And then they offered him the full time job, but he said, no, I'm going to work with my new band, the Foo Fighters, and see if we can make anything happen there. It turns out I once met Dave Grohl's mother. Oh. Yeah, really? on a, on an airplane for it was uh, the weekend before Barack Obama's inauguration. Okay, David Grohl, Dave Grohl, uh, was mm-hmm. flying his mother to watch his band play at the inauguration. Oh wow, that's awesome! And so we were both, and she was like, uh, she said, "Where are you going?" And I was like. I'm going to Minneapolis, gonna go, or I was going to <laughs> St. Louis. I don't know where I was going. And she was, she was like, I'm going to Washington, D.C. And I said, oh, that's cool. I love Washington, D.C. I've only been a couple of times. And she goes, it's great. My son's in a band. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, uh, what band? And she goes, the Foo Fighters. And, uh, and I said, I've actually heard of that band. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, who is your son? And she said, uh, Dave Grohl. And I was like, I've heard of that guy. <laughs> and uh and so that was the entire interaction of uh, an, an older lady and an older lady stuck inside a younger lady uh which is me <laughs> supportive moms only if we all had them am i right <laughs> come on people <laughs> right wouldn't it be great and, that would uh, be awesome that's so great his mom has got a book out i think okay Right now, I think I just heard of this. And by the way, if I'm getting any of my information wrong, I welcome corrections from and your listeners. I love it. I love it. I love discussing it. I love, I even like being corrected. I even yeah. like being corrected because I want to be right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh shit. I, so I believe him, He, I believe his mom has a book coming out or just came out. I know he had just had a book out, um, but I think his mom's writing a Fiction? book about, uh, with other, with other uh, rock are and they, roll moms. Are, oh, are they? With other rock and roll moms, so they're all kind of memoirs about. I think so. I think there so. I don't so know enough many about memoirs it to speak of going on. I don't know what I would do. Like I have, I have great stories, right? You mm-hmm. have, we we have great stories about our. But I would want to intertwine it with something bigger, not just. And then this happened. I mean, this is. I mean, essentially, yeah. the podcasting is where the anecdotes belong to some extent. Yeah, I've been. I don't want to say I've been, but I've been, it's been suggested that I write, I made a lot of bad decisions um, in my youth and twenties and thirties uh, that yet turned you out lived. I survived. Yes. I survived. Very fortunate because a few of my friends didn't. Um, right. Right. And I've whew. been told I should write a book, but I, you know, I think You're, everybody gets told that at one point in their life. Well, I mean the, the, the reason I think that someone would write a book, like some people write a book, they're like, Hey, uh, I made a bad, a lot of bad decisions in my twenties and thirties. I lived. I also tried to commit suicide, and here's why you shouldn't. Right? Like if right. there's another thing on top of it, right? Like if there's uh, a yeah. barnacle on top of the you know, the real the reason why you get right. to tell I, I, your drunk exactly. Along. Yeah. You need your poignant. You need your poignant. You need the what I've learned, and I'm afraid all my stories will just make look drugs look fun and i don't want to do that that's it that's you guys they worked until they stopped working and exactly. uh, that's all exactly and thank god i knock on wood i got out of it on, all on my own without any help of uh, a program or anything so well you're just doing that you're just doing it you're just uh there's sometimes you just hit a wall and you're just like i cannot do this anymore and I so you drinking stopped a little over two years ago yeah it's because um, i was on the road so much yeah. And I, and I'm, I, you know, I, I say that I said this at, uh, the AA, you ever do that, uh, Laura house AA room? Out no, in the valley? no, no. Oh, you got to do it. It's fantastic. All right. Fun. Um, and I sell, I told him I, I quit drinking and you know, I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic, you know, and I'm like, I know I'm in denial, but I just, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So yeah. I just, I just kind of got, you know, you're on the road, you're in a glorified bar. Always, you know, as you know, always. as you know, so, and the man owners are there and they're giving you really high end booze and then. Like one night I'm like, I got to fucking stop, man. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I stopped for the tour mm-hmm. and then the holidays hit and I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling good. If I start drinking during the holidays, I'll really drink. And yeah. I'll drink in the new year. And then the new year came around. I'm like, you know what? I feel good. I think I'm going to wait till I have something to celebrate. Yeah. And then COVID hit. Yep. 
And I'm like, I don't think it's a good time to start drinking when I'm going to be homeschooling my eight-year-old. No. So I'll, I'll and, start drinking after COVID, and here we are two years later. <laughs> right, right. Two years later, and solo drinking. I mean, I mean, you could Zoom drink, but that just right. somehow feels sadder. Uh, I was just never, like, hey, I was we're always, all gonna... always a fan of solo drinking. I was. Oh, fair <laughs> I was enough. Always fair a fan. enough. Okay. It's uh, yeah, I uh, um. Yeah, that because uh, there and there's always like great musicians. What what do we got trivia wise? Musicians who drink. Let's do that segment. <sighs> musicians any- who drink. Well, you can't get any better than uh, the possum George Jones. I mean, that guy was a notorious drunk uh, country artist. Country artist George Jones. George Jones was. What a did- not- I mean, a George. Oh, he uh, what, he did everything? my favorite. He did he did Bartender's <laughs> Blues, which is my favorite song, but it was actually written by James Taylor. Okay. Um. Oh, the the classic, um, um, Bocephus' dad, uh, uh, Hank Williams, drank himself to death at 27. Really? Died, died in the back of a car on the way to a radio gig or a oh radio my God. concert. Just like liver failure or, or just, just, he just, it's just drinking yourself to death. It's just, right. I think that's what Harry Nilsson, I think that's what happened to the aforementioned Harry Nilsson. Pretty it's much so... just drank until your body just shuts down. Just, and they're we're like, done. Uh, we're out. We're, we're out. We're going to. Yeah, we're just going to – and uh, yeah, you know, because it is all so glorified. You know, people talk about like Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix doing drugs and then dying. And then these guys drank it till they died. And then yeah. um, then there's Hunter S. Thompson and, and, uh, and Hemingway who drank and did all the things and then shot themselves. And um, yeah. you're like, I think, I think I like George Carlin who died <laughs> of old age – Considered mm-hmm. a genius in his mm-hmm. bed, surrounded by loved ones. Mm-hmm. That's a way to go. So I want to go. And also, supportive mom. Also, I, uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if that's what you want. <laughs> I was like, what? Do you have a story about George Carlin's like mom? So. And- but isn't there a thing, especially in, in music and in comedy, where, um, you know, drugs and out- drinking are, are, are glorified? You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially in the arts. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and you know, I, used, I have a... Sadly, I have a bit on my last album about, you know, do, doing drugs is the only job where it's OK. And Harold, you can't be an accountant. And, you know, but yeah. I reference Scott Weiland in that one about him dying of drug overdose. And then sadly, he died of a drug overdose like two years ago. Oh, my gosh. So uh, it's kind of. Yeah. Can't, but really, the, can't really take it off the album. But well, it's that, you know, the thing about old albums is they're, they're going to age as they age. And yeah, that's a good and you're going to write new material. And if you get in a. And if you're not willing to go, you know that Lori Kilmartin put a message in front of her one of her Pandora tracks. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't write this joke today. But uh, <laughs> thanks for listening to it. Ah, uh, uh, that's beautiful. It is so great. I was like, that's beautiful. I kind of want to do it in front of all of them. And uh, just <laughs> I kinda... did. Uh, I tweeted something about two a couple of years ago where I said anybody going, anybody coming, any, something like anybody going back in time looking for tweets. Uh, that are you're trying to cancel me on? Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then I know that's going to bite me in the ass eventually. But <laughs> yeah, I haven't always been the nice guy you see before you, Jackie. It's so true. Telling people to bite your ass. This is yeah. that you haven't always been that sweetheart. And uh, <laughs> the uh, I will say I deleted all of my old tweets. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just and then I had a bot that used to delete them every three months. Oh, interesting. Just because I hate. I hate things accrue. I'm like, hey, chatty Magoo, you're too chatty. Uh, yeah. you're, you're just, were they all gems? No, no, they were not. No. So you might as well delete them. And yeah. uh, for some reason, that bot isn't working anymore. So I always have to find some new uh, young comic who knows how to delete bots, uh, who can find a new bot for me. And yeah. then uh, and then we just let it. And I was like, just delete them all. Delete them all. I, I can't yeah. care. It's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. It's uh, Cause cause every it, once in a while, like you'll get like, you know, I try not, I know you have two pages. I know you have your personal Facebook page and your professional Facebook page. And the personal one is politics and all that. And the professional one is not. If I, mm-hmm. if I remember that yes, correctly, that is true. Um, I try to do that. I save most of my political stuff for Twitter. Yeah. Um, but, um, where was I going with this? Oh, like every once in a while I'll put something on like when Trump, <laughs> when Trump got elected, I was just blasting jokes left and right, just blasting them. And only, and then I had hosted, I had co-hosted Bill Ingvall's radio show for many years. Oh, so right, I had right. Very right. I had very right-wing fans and very left-wing fans. And the okay. joke I would put up, they would just all fight for 
you know, hundreds of comments <laughs> below. And I had to stop doing it because all these jokes were just thinly veiled shots at my parents and they weren't even reading them. So <laughs> it was right. like all this, all this stuff for nothing. I can't believe my dad joined Facebook during the pandemic, during lockdown. Ooh. And I was like, ah, why is he? All right. Yeah. And he's 84. And I was like, there's no way. Actually, it's probably the year before my sister gave him a tablet so mm -hmm. that he could uh, so that he could watch Netflix or he could do something. I forget sure. why it was. And I was like, he's not going to be able to figure out how to use the Samsung tablet. It wasn't even an iPad. I can't talk him through it. So I burned a YouTube video of, of the directions on how to use a Samsung iPad. And I, that I mailed him a DVD. He has a DVD player so right, that good. he could watch it. And so I called him one day and I said, did you get the DVD? He said, I have not gotten the DVD. I got the, I, I got the tablet though. And I said, oh, well, the DVD will tell you how to use the tablet. And he goes, well, so far I watched one thing on Netflix and I Googled something. And I said, oh, throw away the DVD, Dad. You have already <laughs> you you are have there, figured my it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not to make any sense. And But I do... Um, we have weeded off so much from musical trivia. Oh, that's fine. That's which, also what I love about podcasts is... Yeah, yeah. We just conversation you take it wherever eventually. It goes, man. It's take true. it wherever it goes. Yeah. Do you have any favorite stories that you want to tell me? Uh, in general? Yeah. About music or Oh, I was gonna say the time I went roller skating at USA United Skates of America. Uh that was fun. The fact grade. that they've named it Skates of America uh makes them geniuses. Right. Uh, good we used for to, them. Oh, we used to have to we used to have to go to we used to have like my church would or a couple churches would rent out the Tuesday night. Sure, would you wouldn't a, want to be a filthy heathens being anywhere near yeah. you, so rent it out. Yeah, yeah. So we went to that, and then like you'd skate for like three hours, and then there would be a sermon afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try and get try and get your friend to come to that again. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I had some friend who was like, I would like to see what the Armenian church services are like, and I was like, they're three hours long, and they're like, Ooh, yeah. I don't care that much. And I was like, yeah, no, no one does. No one does. Yeah. I went we to did, Sunday we school. We did about an hour and a half and I was done. Yeah, yeah. At, at an hour and a half, way too long. Yeah, too long. But you do what you can. Uh, you mm -hmm. try to, it was, uh, it was, you know, there's, what kind of, could you roller skate backwards? Were you good at roller skating by you the end of it? I wasn't, I wasn't good at a lot of things, but I was good at roller skating. Oh, there you go. I can't, I can't inline, I can't inline skate to save my life. Oh, but, but the I was good. I could do the four. I could Xana do that shit up. I could, yeah, totally. But That's I, awesome. I could never do. I have weak ankles, Jackie. I have weak ankles. Oh, interesting. Ever. Ice skate or inline skate. Mm -hmm. you, you would need the support. You'd need those good uh, skates instead of the rentals. So, good, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's hard to it's hard to write that write write that. Uh, <laughs> what so? You had um, asked me uh, one of the favorite stories about yeah. music. Um, I think one of my favorites is going coincidentally going back to John Lennon. Um, he and Elton John did a, uh, a song, um, whatever gets you through the night, I think it is. And when they recorded it, Elton said, oh, this is going to be a hit. And John's like, it's not going to be a hit. He's like, if it goes to number one, you have to come on stage and play it with me. And he's like, fine, that'll never happen. And it went to number one and it was either Madison Square Garden and Nassau Coliseum. I've read both, but I think it was Madison Square Garden one right. night. Elton John and Lennon hadn't been on stage. The Beatles had broken up. He hadn't been on stage in a few years. Mm -hmm. And he said, he told the story and he said, so ladies and gentlemen, John Lennon and John Lennon comes out and he said, Elton John says he has never heard a crowd scream Lose louder minds <laughs> louder or longer before and since. And right. they played, they played that song. And then they played, I think uh, I saw her stand in there and maybe, maybe Lucy in the sky, maybe. And I would love to have been there for that. Yeah. I don't think I'd love to have been. To, I don't think I'd love to have been to Woodstock, but I'd love to have been there for that. But how loud? How loud would that have been? Just, like you just ruin you can, your eardrums. Yeah, you can. There's audio. I don't think there's video of it, but you can get audio of it on YouTube now. And what was the song? What was the the duet? That I think they it's did? whatever gets you through the night. Um, I'm pretty yeah. sure of that. Like I said, I had one, two rock critics question me, and now I'm. Uh, <laughs> and now, now you're I'm double guessing everything. yourself. Yeah, and uh, it's um, that's. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised that they didn't riot, like just start breaking folding chairs right, right? over like, each other. Uh, all those young uh, teeny bopper uh, girl, you know, they're all uh, 
they're all they're all older at that point. They're all into their late teens and maybe too cool. Right, right. But they did lose their minds. So there is that. Yes, they did. Oh, that is awesome. Yes. That's a great story. Yeah, um, that's why. Yeah, I, I also I live. I love, love, love when I go see a concert and there's a surprise guest. Mm -hmm. Like just. I, it's my, my favorite thing ever. I, I love it so much. Okay. It's, it's so great. Have you seen many good ones or? Um, let me see off the top of my head. Uh, I saw the Grateful Dead when the Neville brothers and Los Lobos <laughs> joined them. That's. Um... Um, oh, oh uh, uh, you too. Gwen Stefani hopped on stage. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, you know what? I love, I love, I, I never see uh, outside of work in TV or, or going to something my wife has done. I never see celebrities anywhere in yeah. life, except yeah. for when I go to a concert here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Especially a bigger one. And then I remember there's a comic named Chris Frangiola. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. We went to see, we went to see you two together and we kind of sat on the back, like right above the floor where you could just you could see over everybody's heads. Mm -hmm. And we just sat there going, well, there's Tom Cruise. <gasps> there's Angelina Jolie. There's Robbie Robertson. Oh, there's Billy Corgan from Smashing Pie. Oh, Courtney Love. <laughs> like just clicking off as they all walked by because they all walk by after the lights go down a little bit and then right. you know so they don't get they don't get uh, so I see most celebrity sightings at uh, concerts. Yeah. By the way, uh, this was in September 26, 1974. That was Lennon's final concert. That was the final time he was he did uh, a concert. It that was, was at, his final live performance. Yeah, 1974, wow. Madison Square Garden. He joined Elton John on stage after losing a bet. Three songs: mm -hmm. uh, "Whatever Gets You Through the Night," "Lucy in the Sky" with Diamonds, oh. and "I Saw Her Standing There," which were the other ones that you also. I'm spot on, motherfuckers. That's I am it. spot on today. Oh, nailed Not it. Not anybody Stuck the can just host their own YouTube. Trivia. Oh, wait, everybody can. <laughs> anybody can. But by the way, anybody I am can. talking with Murray. We have, a, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, okay, sure. Yeah, I'm talking uh, Valeriano, Murray. Uh, it's the... Valeriano. Valeriano. What? How did I do it? Valer Valeria. Yeah, Val. Valeria. Yeah, I did it. Valeriano. And, I'm not being a prick. Uh, just no, as no. a running joke between Jackie it and I. It certainly for is. <laughs> for 20 years. It's why I called the album Staycation in the hopes that people would pronounce my name right. Oh, uh, beautiful. And I was introduced on stage the other night. She has a new album coming out called Staycation. Please welcome Jackie Kashian. And <laughs> I was like, ah. wow. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. My favorite yep. introduction on stage. And I can always tell when the MC is not going to get it because they just kind of like get that shark glass over eyes when they're, you know, yep. and he's like, hey, do you feel on my blah, blah, blah? Uh -huh. um, Murray, Murray, Murray. <laughs> Yep. And that was my introduction. <laughs> oh my God. So <laughs> nuts. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So let's leave on. Uh, you, you got another one or what do you got? Uh, of a story yeah. of a favorite uh, musical story. Man, there, there's so many. Um, uh, I think I'm drawing a blank on favorite musical stories. Um, I'm going to name a band. Yeah, I, okay. Wings. That's a band. Oh, Wings. I love Wings. I saw, I love Wings. Wings is great. Wings over America, across America is one of my favorite live albums. I got to see Paul McCartney. This is one of my favorite stories ever. Okay. On the Flowers in the Dirt tour. This is one of my favorite personal stories. Okay. Uh, on the Flowers in the Dirt tour, 1989, 1990, 1989, I think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is, this is, again, this is like, I'm just now getting into concerts and music because I'm out of my dad's jurisdiction as a teenager. So I'd never been to many concerts. I bought uh, Obstructed View which I didn't even know what obstructed view was, but I was really into the Beatles at this point, And I was really into Paul McCartney solo stuff because this is the eighties. And I was just so excited to go see a Beatle. I, I couldn't believe he's going to play all these Beatles songs that he'd never played before. So we get obstructed view and <gasps> we we're like, it's at mass. It's, it's at a uh, giant stadium. We're up in, you know, no section C of tranquility, if you will. <laughs> like that's how high we are. Yeah. Um, and so this guy, and so it was me and my girlfriend at the time and my best friend, Rich and Brian Bopp were like, four rows behind us. And uh, this guy comes up who I had seen in an interview on 60 minutes with Paul McCartney the week before. Right. So I, by the way, the first time I ever watched 60 minutes, I'm sure. And, uh, and he walks up to me and he goes, Mr. McCartney has some seats down closer to the stage for people with obstructive view. Do you guys, <gasps> do you want a couple? And I'm like, yeah, can we get two for my friends up there? And I'm sure they came to us cause we were 18, right. you know, so right, they're right. not young people. You yeah. know, I'm sure. 
And so he's like, sure. So I'm like, are they better than these seats? And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we get them. We go downstairs. We go to the floor of Giant Stadium. And we're at the back. And we hand the guy our tickets. And, they, and the guy goes, oh, hold on one second. And he calls over his supervisor. We're like, oh, man, we got fucked. Like, we, we got bogus tickets. How could that be? I thought I recognized that guy from 60 Minutes. And then the, the guy comes over and he goes, oh, okay, follow me. So he walks us. You know, it's got to be easily a hundred rows. Back right, right, right. For, it's for the a floor, quarter right? of a mile. It's easily. Yeah, it's, it's a, a it's half a football a mile. Field. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a football, football field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Giant stadium. And he walks us straight to the front row. What? And he goes, all right, let's say there's a hundred seats across. He goes, all right, this is seat one. That's seat a hundred. Your seat 49, your seat 50, your seat 50, and your seat 51. So I got dead center front row wow. paul mccartney i mean i was a 16 year old beatlemania girl wow screaming my <laughs> heads off the whole it's still the greatest concert experience of my life that's so cool one of the previous dork for us was um spacing I, it was about diana ross and um okay. i am i've lost her name to the ether in in this moment but her and her brother he was gay and out in 1970 and 18, which is gutsy stuff. She was yeah, 16 and uh, it was 70, 71, something like that. And they lived here in Los Angeles and there was a Diana Ross concert that was happening in like a Lutheran church pancake hall, right? Like just like <laughs> some sort of weird conference hall. Right. And so he's like, we're going to go. So get your, get your duds. And so she borrows mm -hmm. like a fabulous halter top, flared skirt, like a big pant, flared pant sure. outfit from her neighbor. She's 16. Her brother's 18. He is fabulous from the get. So they right, show, absolutely. they drive in their, uh, their parents' jalopy or whatever the heck. They get there. They walk in. Uh, he grabs her hand, puts it on his arm, and they walk up to like, it's open seating. Mm-hmm. Like and he goes, to, he goes to essentially like the maitre d or whoever's working the door, and he goes, right. "My wife and I just got married. Diana Ross is her favorite artist. Could you get us near the front?" And he gives him a twenty, and they he sits him right next to the stage for Diana Ross, nineteen seventy one. Diana Ross calls the two of them on stage to dance with her. What? And they oh, that makes me so happy. And they lose their mind. And oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I was like, so uh, we, that episode of the Dork Forest, so great. And uh, my favorite line, I think it was her who said it, not me. She said, we never consummated our our wedding. Uh, <laughs> me and my brother. It's really for the best. <laughs> Fantastic. That reminds me of a, a, a piece of trivia that I just had on my uh, episode mm -hmm. where Dolly Parton, who we who we love, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yep. Um Entered a West Halloween Halloween Carnival Dolly Parton lookalike contest. Okay. And lost <laughs> to a drag queen. <laughs> Outstanding. Right? Um, Come on. Yes. How fantastic Mar is that? Marie Valeriano, uh, it is Jackie Cation. We have been talking for an hour. It has gone by oh, so quickly. Beautiful. Um, every I can talk to you for an hour anytime. As a matter of fact, I know you're wrapping this up, but you and I, uh, about once a year, get into uh, about an hour, hour and a half phone call. Just a phone call, bringing it, talking about everything. Hour, hour and a half, and I miss it, and I love it, and I can't wait till the next one we do. All right. And everybody, uh, you can listen to his older episodes, which was you too, and of course, surfing. And right. then, um, for what it's worth, is on YouTube. It's uh, I'm going to put it in the notes. Um, and Marie Valeriano comedy is where it is at on YouTube. And it's also on Apple podcast podcast for what it's yeah, worth for the audio version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For what it's worth. And it'll be on all my socials also. It's all in all of them, which is, I think Murray V is it not? Is that what you're at Murray V on Twitter, Murray Valeriano comedy on Instagram and TikTok. tock, to talk, to talk, talk, which my kid loves. All right. And Rangers, you know, the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?